Welcome to a Legendarium special about Valentinian I, Rome's fearsome Christian emperor. In this episode, we will learn about the late 4th century emperor who battled both barbarians and paganism. Flavius Valentinianus, or Valentinian I, was born during the year 321 in Roman Pannonia. The son of an army officer stationed in Central Europe, Valentinian joined the army as a young man and later served with his father in Africa. Both father and son were devout Christians, by then the religion of most of the Roman Empire, especially the army. Sometime during the 350s, Valentinian married a woman named Marina Severa and they had a son named Gratian, born in 359. During the reign of Julian the Apostate, a Roman emperor who rejected Christianity, Valentinian left the imperial entourage because he refused to renounce his faith. That did not stop Julian from bringing Valentinian on the Persian expedition of 363 after Valentinian served in Roman Egypt for a time. After Julian's death, the next emperor, Jovian, promoted Valentinian to commander of his second formation of shield bearers. However, Jovian's political career suffered a terrible setback with his death in 364. Nine days later, army commanders proclaimed Valentinian the new emperor at Nicaea on March 22nd. A deeply superstitious man despite being a Christian, Valentinian declined to accept the offer until the 23rd because he considered 22 to be an unlucky number. On March 28, 364, on the first official day of his reign, the army hailed Valentinian as emperor. They handed him a purple cloak and placed a diadem upon the podium set in front of his troops. Like Julian four years earlier, his troops raised Valentinian up on a shield. When the emperor prepared to speak, the assembled troops drowned him out, demanding that a co-emperor be chosen right away to spare the empire danger, so Emperor Valentinian appointed his younger brother Valens co-emperor and ordered him to govern the east. Meanwhile, he would govern the west. Both agreed to allow religious toleration, though both would target pagan practices, though not pagans themselves. Valentinian I was a brash and rather boorish man who kept a pet bear named Innocence near his sleeping quarters at all times. If he needed to dispose of an enemy, he fed him or her to Innocence. Though Valentinian had a nasty temper, he often showed himself a capable soldier. That is fortunate, for like most of the later emperors, Valentinian spent most of his time at war. He made a few revisions to the law code, ordering the death penalty for debtors and for corrupt officials to be burned alive. Displaying an exhaustible energy, Valentinian fortified and defended Rome's northern borders. In January 365, his commanders in Gaul suffered a disastrous defeat at the blood-caked hands of the Alemanni. By October, Valentinian set up residence in Paris, from where he directed operations against the Germanic invaders. Around this time, he divorced his first wife, Marina, and married a new woman named Justina, despite being a professed Christian. As early as January 366, three great armies of Alemanni crossed the frozen Rhine and plunged into imperial lands. The incompetence of the Roman commander Dagajolf allowed them to run riot. Valentinian charged his man Jovinus with crushing the Alemanni, and he defeated them three times. At the third engagement, fought in modern Chalons-sur-Marne, Jovinus inflicted such terrible casualties upon the Alemanni that he secured Roman Gaul for generations. Meanwhile, in 367, the emperor moved to the town of Ammiani to be closer with his general Theodosius, who defended Britain from Saxon, Pict, and Scottish invaders. However, that year Valentinian's reign nearly ended because of a bout with illness, which left his inner circle briefly looking for a successor. 
Fortunately, they did not need one when Valentinian recovered, which perhaps made for an awkward moment. Nonetheless, to strengthen the line of succession, on August 24, 367, Valentinian proclaimed his eight-year-old son Gratian as co-emperor. He also appointed a prefect in Rome named Maximinus who oversaw the emperor's ban on magic, which he saw as rank paganism. On Valentinian's wishes, Maximinus cracked down on illegal sex as well. He executed many women of high birth for adultery. Some of the more notable victims included Marinus, who used magic to secure a marriage, supposedly. A teenager named Lolianus was put to death for writing about black magic, and the authorities punished an adulterous woman named Floliana by stripping her naked and then executing her before a cheering crowd. Two months later, Valentinian took up residence at Trier and remained there for seven more years. He devoted his attention to the construction of an elaborate system of fortifications on the Rhine River. In 373, the Quadi nation became angered when Rome began building in their territory. Quadi messengers demanded to speak to someone, but Roman officials ignored them. Valentinian assigned Marcellianus, the son of a high-ranking Roman official and one of the worst diplomats in history, to deal with the Quadi problem. To bridge the divide between Rome and the Quadi, Marcellianus summoned the Quadi leaders to a banquet. As the tribal leaders feasted, Marcellianus suddenly rose from his seat and ordered his men to murder every Quadi man in the middle of the banquet. If Marcellianus hoped this would end Quadi resistance to the Roman fortifications, he proved sorely mistaken. Allying with another barbarian nation, the Sarmatians, the Quadi declared war upon the Roman Empire. While they could not capture fortified cities, the barbarians could pillage through the Roman countryside as they pleased. So Valentinian tasked two legions to deal with the rampaging Quadi and Sarmatians. However, they failed to coordinate with one another, and a war party of Sarmatians sent them running. Valentinian heard of the setback a year later in 374. He waited for the winter snow to thaw, and the very next spring he set out from his headquarters in Trier to make peace with the Quadi at the tip of a sword if need be. Quickly after leaving Trier, Valentinian and his army came upon a group of Sarmatians. The Sarmatians, being outnumbered, begged for Valentinian's forgiveness, which he quickly granted. He also promised to personally lead an investigation of the crimes against the Quadi. However, while accepting of their apology and willing to forgive their transgressions against the Empire, Valentinian completely ignored Marcellianus' actions. We don't know why he did this. Could he have been the son of a powerful man? Did Valentinian just not want to admit Roman guilt? In the end, it doesn't matter. This led to renewed war between the Empire and the Quadi, with Valentinian easily crushing the barbarians again. Once more, the Quadi asked for a face-to-face, -face, which the Emperor granted. During the talks, Valentinian became frustrated by the Quadi refusal to take full responsibility for the war which Marcellianus started. As his anger rose, Valentinian became apoplectic, screaming and hollering at the barbarian envoys. Very suddenly, Valentinian became speechless, his face turning purple, and he sweat profusely. His servants moved him into a bedroom where he tried to say something, but he could not, and he died on November 18th, 375. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.